What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over putting the icons on the minimap in the correct spot. So we have all these different icons that we set up in the previous episode, so we got them showing on the screen, uh, on the minimap, and they were in the top left corner. Now we're going to want them to show in the proper spot on the minimap based on where we are, right? Because as the character moves around, the minimap updates, shows where they're at in relation to the map. And the player icon there is displayed and shows where the player's at or where the character's at. So in relation to them, you can tell that it's working because the enemy icon is right here when I'm right next to the enemy. Same thing if I go next to this one. And these little unreal icons are everywhere there's a weapon. So there's a dagger here. There is an axe here. And there is a sword here. Also... You'll notice they won't be able to leave the minimap. The symbols should not be able to go out of bounds of the minimap. They should stay on it. So there you go. They can go to the edge, but they can't go any farther. That's what we're going to be covering today. Very fun one. Very excited about this one, guys. So we can go ahead and get started. But before we do, if you'd like to get caught up in the series, I'll link you to this playlist right here. It's the entire third-person tutorial series, so it has every episode to show you how we got to this point. Alternatively, in the top right corner, I'll post this iCard, which is the first episode of the minimap episodes within this series. So if you'd like to get caught up on just that specific stuff and see how we did everything to get to this point, that's where you can do that. All right. So going forward, what we're going to need today is we're going to edit our mini map, our map icon, and grab some stuff from our character HUD. I'm going to start in the mini map section. So this widget is a widget that we had, which basically just holds the uh, material for the mini map. And then we put it on our HUD right here. In the previous episode, I was showing you how you could get the icons on the minimap. Even though they weren't technically in the right spot, we were just generating them and they were going to an auto-generated spot. We want to now change that so that they appear in the center. So in our create icon for minimap, we had our set horizontal alignment and set vertical alignment to left and top, I believe. But if we are to leave those, then our data is going to be a little bit offset. It's going to be actually a little bit wrong. So we want to make sure that we mark these as center now because we want them to be placed. The offset should be based around the player and where their location is on the minimap. So wherever this minimap is being generated, we want these icons to also be generated from the same point of reference. So we want it all to be based off the center of this texture, of this HUD element, whatever it may be. Okay, so make sure in the minimap create icon for minimap, we set the horizontal and vertical alignment to center on each, not any of the other options. Okay, and there's one other thing that we have to do here, and that is to add a variable to keep track of the size that is going to be this widget on the HUD. This is because we're going to need to know how big this widget on the HUD actually is to properly calculate where we need to display each icon. If we get the sizes wrong, they'll be offset incorrectly and the minimap data won't really line up with what we're seeing in the real world data in the game. Okay, so we can make a float variable to store this. I've called it size in window. I'm gonna hard code it to be 350 for now. Okay, so add a variable, make it a float, call it size in window, and then once you compile, you'll be able to set a default value for it. I've set it to 350 right here. Now, as the window size can change in the future, that widget size can also change depending on your scale settings and resolution. So we're going to need to make sure we can update that based on how big it is on the HUD. But we'll cover resizing on widgets as a whole. So it'll be a completely unique episode where we cover resizing. That is where we will cover setting that based on the size in the HUD. So for now, hard coding is fine. The way we get this size is based on what the size is on the widget. So on our character HUD, I've put the minimap widget here. I have a size X of 350, size Y of 350. 
having those sizes in there, I know that I want my size and window to be 350. It's important to note if you have a shape, not a square. So I have a square here, 350 by 350, but you could have a rectangle, say you make it a lot bigger, okay? Then your size changes. So you need to either keep track of two sizes, make a uh, vector 2D since it has an X and a Y, or something similar. If you do have different sizes, then make sure you account for that. But otherwise, I'd say just leave it a square for now. We can always color, cover different size maps in the future because we are going to be going over an overhead map, in which case it will be a different size. It won't be a perfect square all the time. Okay. So go ahead and add this float or your vector, like I said, if you're doing it in a rectangle, and make sure you set the values accordingly. I know mine is 350 on each, so size and window is perfect for 350. We don't actually have to change anything else within the minimap widget itself. But the majority of the logic today is going to be the map icon widget. This is where the major work is being done. So we have a lot of work in here. Okay. And it's going to be a lot of math to basically get everything in the correct spot. It's actually not too bad once you see the big picture, but manually thinking about this and getting it all in the correct spot the first time is pretty complicated so i'm going to go through it in depth there's one thing we should do first just so we can access the variables on the minimap and that is to get a reference to the minimap from the map icon so what i do is pretty simple i basically do some logic after event construct to grab the reference to the widget and set it in this class because the map icon is going to need to have the minimap, especially in the future, we're going to need more, more and more data from the minimap as we progress. The reason I do it this way is because I could just do it in tick, but then I would have to grab this uh, widget every single time, which is pretty costly. And I could also just wait and spawn it from somewhere and grab it through an event which is probably what we'll do in the future, but we haven't actually done that right now. We just have the HUD pop up when it's spawned from the character, in which case I don't have any specific spawn order and way to keep track of that data. So instead of doing that, instead of adding all that to today's episode, I've just basically set a timer that after 0.1 seconds of game time passing, once this widget has been constructed, we will then go ahead and set the minimap reference. Okay, so the way we do this is I call set timer by event at the end of my logic from event construct from the previous episode. Set timer by event. Okay, this is what it'll look like when you get it initially. We don't want it to loop. We only want it to do it once. And we're going to set the time to be just some value above zero. I'm putting 0 0.1. You don't need anything else set in here. So I left them alone. And then if you drag off of the event node, you can do add custom event. Okay, then you'll get a custom event. I've called it set minimap reference. Change the name right here. Then in this event, what I've done is super simple. We know that there's only one minimap that's ever going to be here, so we can just get all widgets of class to grab it. Okay. Make sure top level only is unchecked because it's going to be actually on our HUD, so it's not top level. Top level would be if we're grabbing the character HUD, but uh, character HUD is actually hiding the minimap widget here, see? So if I were to do this, this is top level only. But then when I search the other levels, I can find the actual minimap. So uncheck top level only, select minimap as the widget, drag off the found widgets, type git, get a copy, Index zero is the one we want. And you can drag off of that, promote it to a variable. I've already done that, and I called it minimap ref. Okay. So once you've done this, then once this map icon is created, 0.1 seconds later, it will update the location of this icon based on the data we have in event tick. This will only happen if we have a minimap reference set, so you won't get any errors if tick runs before the minimap is set. Okay, so when you play, you can actually see that the icons have to kind of teleport in because of our time. So you can make it smaller, 0.05, and you can see they get set up a lot faster. But everything is still valid. 
like I said, once we get farther in the series and we have a proper spawn order, then we'll be able to have the mini-map reference set immediately, so there won't really be any sort of delay. The icons will appear before any user could ever notice it. But for now, this will do the job. And now we're going to get into the main logic for today's episode. This is where it gets complicated. So what we have to do is determine where we are in the world, where these icons, or where these items are in the world, and where these icons should show up on the map. So based on their location in the world, we're going to relate that to where they should be on the mini-map. There's a few things we need. We need to know the size of the widget. As I've already mentioned, we set up the variable for this in the mini-map called size in window. We are also going to need the variables that we set up using the material. Remember, we set up the X position, Y position, size, and zoom. We're going to need some of those today. Then we're going to need to relate it back to the center point of the mini-map which is our owning player pawn. He's basically going to be our default here, our little assassin. He's going to be essentially our origin on the minimap. Not the origin in terms of like top left, but I mean, we're going to do all of our math based on the center point so we know where these things relate to based on where the character is. And then we can display them in the proper spot. Okay. So let's just go ahead and get started. Like I said, I'll explain what each step is doing. So hopefully it makes a good amount of sense. And then at the end, I think you'll have a nice picture of how everything links together. So first things first, we need to set up event tick in our map icon widget. So if you haven't already done this, you can just type event tick and it will show up if you spell it correctly, unlike I did the first time. So there you go. Once we have event tick, this is going to run every single frame, which is what we need in this case, because we want these icons to update constantly. Technically, they don't have to update unless there is any change in the minimap. So when you're standing still, it's just running event tick and they're staying in place. But for now, running it every single frame is fine regardless of movement. And honestly, it's going to be fine regardless in the end, because it's not going to be that costly. We're going to be pretty smart with our math. And we'll limit what things can be on the minimap. Eventually, once they get too far away, they should not stick to the side, but actually disappear. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is make sure that our minimap is valid. If it's not, we'll have nowhere to put these, which technically would be fine. However, we need to grab some of the variables from the minimap, such as the size, to actually do this correctly in which case we're going to need our reference. So we might as well skip it if the reference is not valid. So I get our minimap reference and then I convert it to a validated get. By doing this, only if it's valid do we continue. Okay. And so now what we need is to grab our zoom and size variables from our material parameter collection. We set this up in the first episode of the advanced minimap, but basically if we go to our minimap, I have this MPC minimap, which has default values for these four variables. We use them in the material. And these values can also be changed based on certain data. For example, we actually set the minimap in event tick. We set these scalar parameters based on the owning player pawn's location. Okay. So by grabbing those variables, we can actually use them to determine where these other icons are as well, not just the player icon and not just where we're at on the texture, but we can also determine where these icons should be on the minimap. So we're going to get scalar parameter value. We're not setting them, to, we're not setting them to a specific value this time. We're actually getting their values. Okay, because they can change, remember? So the first one we need is zoom. Zoom can change. Currently we don't have any way to change the zoom on our minimap. But theoretically, we will in the future. And even if we don't, we need to know what ratio or what value we're looking at this minimap from, because the size that we're zoomed into it and how much of it we can see determines where we need to spawn the icons on the minimap. If we're zoomed all the way in and we're super close to it, well, it's going to change where the, the icons are. Okay, so we need to get scalar parameter, choose our material parameter collection, get zoom. We can copy that and we want to get the size as well. Remember, the size is the size of the rendered target that took a picture of the initial image. So it's basically how big 
of an actual area in the world that we have. So we have 5,000 units. Okay, so we need zoom and size. They return a value, this node, because this returns the actual size that you have. So what we have to do is we have to, first of all, take our size of the world and divide it by the size of the widget in the window. It's the very first thing we need to do. Okay. So for me, the size is 5,000. I never, ever change that now. However, as we change our mini map, say we get a bigger world, then we're going to have to change the size. Or if we have multiple mini maps, like say we have one indoors and one outdoors, well, we could have two and they could be different sizes. So we'll have to get the size based on the proper mini map. But for now, mine is 5,000. So we'll just work with that number. We're taking 5,000 and we're dividing by the size in the window which is how big this widget is. By doing that, we're determining what the ratio is between these two, the, the real world size and the size in the window, what we have to work with and what's the difference between them. Not really the difference, what's the conversion between them. Conversion from real world space to the space we have on the widget. Now, that's all well and good. We can get the entire size of the widget and the size of how it would be displayed without the zoom. But to get it in relation to the zoom, we have to multiply it with the zoom, okay? So zoom of 0 0.5 needs to be multiplied by this ratio so we know exactly how far zoomed in we are as well. Okay, so go ahead and multiply your zoom result with this division. So it essentially gets the spot that the minimap is showing that is in relation to the real world location that they are at, okay? We're going to need this because then we're going to drag off this point and grab offsets of where these icons are so we know where to display them within that range that we have. So long story short, this is basically getting the point. So see right here where this enemy is? That calculation is essentially determining, okay, this is how much space we have. This is what we can see. All right, that's what this calculation did. Now what we need to do is figure out these offsets so we can actually spawn these icons at the correct locations. So next thing we're going to do, we need the X and Y position. We technically could use our scalar parameters from the X and Y position here, and it would work perfectly fine. However, I've gone ahead and just used the owning player pawns location again. Up to you how you want to do it. I felt this was a little bit cleaner because we don't have to go through the execution line and get two more get scalar parameter values. But what we're doing is we're grabbing the player pawn's location and we're going to get the difference between its location and the icon we want to display. Again, the character is like a reference point here. Anytime you do the difference or one minus another, you're getting essentially the, lo the difference in location that they are. Okay. So we do X to X and Y to Y. So let's see how this works. Okay. So we have get owning player pawn. And then we're going to get the actor location off of that. All right. Now we're going to split the struct pin to get access to X, Y, and Z of the owning player pawn. Remember, the character that can see the widget on their HUD is the owning player pawn. So the assassin character that we're controlling is the owning player pawn. We're getting its real location in the world. We're going to minus, float minus float. And we're going to subtract the icon owner's location. So in the previous episode, we set up something called an icon owner. So in the case of the enemies, the icon owner is the enemy. Okay. So if you want to see it, the icon owner of the red icon here is this enemy right in front of me. That's all that's doing. So we're grabbing their location as the other one. We want to subtract the icon owner's actor location split it. Okay, we want to do x minus x. And that's what we're doing right here. There's another subtraction here, we do y minus y. Okay, it's important that you stay in the same uh, axis when you're actually subtracting these because we only want to get one difference at a time. If you do x minus y, it's not going to make any sense. We want to make sure that we get the x distance and the y distance. That's why we're subtracting for both of these. Okay, now, on the y subtraction, I multiply by negative 1. This is because if you don't, 
Very simple, you can probably guess based on what you've seen in the material. If we don't do this, then we're going to get some reversed directions. So in this specific one, you can see everything is reversed. Uh, it's literally mirrored. So you can see how the, on the right side, I uh, if I move to the right and look at that base enemy BP, the enemy I'm actually looking at is considered the leftmost on the minimap. See that? See how it's mirrored? So in the world, this enemy on my left that I'm looking at right now is showing to the right of me on the minimap. Watch as I go left, everything to the right of me moves closer. So you can tell it's reversed, right? Now, if I am to multiply by negative one, like we do here, and pass that into the next part, you can see now it's working as intended. As I walk to the left, things to the left of me on the minimap get closer to me. Things to the right get farther away. That's how it should be. So this is just an inverse, and that accounts for the direction. I can actually explain why that happens, too. See how a positive y value here is the left and right? See how it's, the y is going to the right? That means that positive y is to the right. Well, on the minimap and on the the texture it's the opposite so it's actually going to be the reverse direction when, we're, when the character is seeing it on the hud and so if we don't multiply by negative one then it uses the standard minimap coordinates for it which is reversed now the next things we need to do are divide by we have to divide by the zoom scale multiplication that we did this is the distance between the player or the character and the object with an icon in the real world for the x-axis, and this is for the y-axis. But this is in the real world space. We need to get that based on where the minimap space is. Okay. So if we go ahead and divide each of these, we divide the x difference and the y difference. Okay, divide them by the multiplication here. And this gets us the difference on the minimap where they should be showing up. But that doesn't quite display it on the minimap in the right spot. Once we do both these divisions, we can go ahead and make it a vector 2D. Don't technically have to do this, but we're going to be using vectors in the next part. So I'd recommend making it one now. Alternatively, feel free to just have pass in two floats to this function for each vector. Okay, so you can drag off your division here. Say make vector 2D. Click it. And then you'll drag this one to X, this one to Y. So X division goes into X, Y division goes into Y. Now we need another function. Really we don't. However, we can actually use this function for things in the future. So I've decided to break it out as opposed to copying logic later. You can make a new function and I've called it determine location on minimap. So we have the proper spot that we want this icon to show up, but we need to know where it's actually going to be on the minimap based on where the player is, based on what bounds we have on the minimap. Okay. So if you make a new function, like I did, and you compile, you'll be able to add parameters. I want to add two input parameters. I have two vector 2Ds. Okay. These are both vector 2D. Uh, vector 2D right here both this type. I have one that's the character vector and one that's the icon vector. So the character vector, we're going to leave at zero, zero, because the character is in the in the center of the map. And we're going to use that as the reference. Okay, so this can be left as zero, zero. Well, I'm still calling it character vector because that's what we're doing. We're basically using that as the default entrance point. And then we have the icon vector here, which is where we want to where the icon should actually be. So you can go ahead and call this new function you made and just pass in the vector that we made into the icon vector. Cool. Now, into this function, we have quite a bit more math, but again, I'm going to explain it all, so don't worry. So now what we have to do is figure out where these things are at based on the angles that they're located. Okay, so it, it's a little bit weird, but let me show you why this is the case. You can ignore what I'm about to do for a second. This is just for demonstration. Okay. I'm going to give you an example of why this function is actually necessary. So you don't have to do what I'm doing here. 
But let's say we took the return value that we made, which is, remember, it's the change in position from the player to the other icon. And say we just set the render translation of the map icon widget to this location. Let's play and see what happens. So it looks pretty much all right. It's not inverted. It's not in the proper orientation. So you can see that the enemies are showing up like kind of behind me and at the wrong spots. But that's actually just due to some negative ones, like I was saying earlier. So don't worry about that too much. But see that there is actual like positions to these spots. And as I get really close to this widget, you can see that I'm actually really close to them. And same with this, as I'm really close to this one, you can see I'm really close to it. It is tracking the locations between the player and the other icons properly. But there's a few issues. First of all, the actual orientation that we're moving around the map, that's fine. But where they're located on the map, depending on how we're rotated, you can see is not fine. So that's issue number one. Issue number two is that they can go outside the bounds of the minimap. Okay, see how they can go off the minimap? That's because they're actually that far away proportionally. They're saying, yes, th th these enemies are this far away from the character. All right. So they literally are being spaced on the minimap, but outside of it. So what we have to do is make sure that these objects are both related to the direction we're moving, the angle we're facing, whatever it may be, just some way that it's correctly corresponding to where the character is. And then it also has to be displayed within the minimap's bounds, okay? Because we only have a certain section that we can actually work with. We don't want these icons displaying off the bounds of the minimap. All right. So we have the, the locations working, as I said, and that's all well and good. But now let's get the rest of it working so it actually displays where we expect it to on the minimap, not out of bounds of the minimap, just on the screen anywhere. So go into that new function that we made, determine location on minimap. Like I said, we'll have two vectors that we can use at the start here. With the character, which is 0, 0, and then we have the icon, which is the actual position of the, the location, 2D location of that icon. Up to this point, we have not taken into account the rotation and how changing our rotation changes where icons or where objects are in relation to it, right? So what we need to do is determine basically the angle that is from the player. That way we can move these in the corresponding direction. All right. So first things first, I actually break both these vectors. This break vector 2D. And it will give you two Xs and two Ys, an X and a Y for each vector 2D. What we have to do is get the difference between them, just like you would any other way, just how we did the difference between the locations earlier. So we're getting the, the difference in the location now, plain and simple. So the way you do this is you drag off of it, get your good old subtract, and we do x minus x, and we do y minus y. Okay. And then we need to do uh, the inverse tangent here to get the degrees result. When thinking of this as a triangle, we have, this is our horizontal distance, and this is our vertical distance, okay? Now, when you're doing, when you're when you're thinking of it as a triangle, you have different functions you can do to figure out uh, what one side of the triangle is. If you have two sides of the triangle, you can always figure out what one side of the triangle is if you don't know it. So what we're trying to do is figure out the hypotenuse, essentially, the, the longest side of the triangle. And we have an X and a Y. We have an X location difference and a Y location difference. And so what that does is that gets us our X and Y distances. So to get the hypotenuse with an X and a Y with a horizontal and a vertical, we have our opposite and our adjacent because we're trying to find our hypotenuse. So we don't have that one. Okay. Long story short, what we need is we need our vertical and our horizontal. Our X is our horizontal our y is our vertical. So when thinking of this as a triangle, we need to do tangent to get the hypotenuse and we want to get the angle of that. We don't care about the distance. We already have that, but we want to get the angle so we know where to display it on the minimap. All right, so this is the distance between our x values and this is the distance between our y values. I'm going to open up paint real quick just to prove this example. I'll make it super quick. But say we have this triangle, okay? Say we have this guy. This is our hypotenuse. 
Oops. Let's see if I can get a thicker brush here. This is our hypotenuse. This is our opposite. This is our adjacent. Okay, because this is the... We're trying to figure out this angle right here because this angle is where the player is at and we're trying to figure out where the the icon is at. So player icon, enemy icon. We're trying to figure out where this I, enemy icon is at on the mini map. So we're trying to figure out this angle so we know what direction and where, where essentially we have to draw the enemy icon for it to be in the right spot. Well, this is our X and this is our Y. Okay, and tangent is determined by opposite over adjacent. Tangent is what we need to get the hypotenuse. We actually need the angle of the hypotenuse, which is determined through inverse tangent. I'm not gonna go into all that right now. If you're not familiar with it, it's okay. I would like to be covering these in specific episodes. I've actually started doing a basic C++ course and we'll cover some of this stuff as well, some of the math principles. That way you can understand uh, some of this stuff if you've never gone through it before, because it is really confusing the first time through. But long story short, we need to find the angle of the hypotenuse. We don't care about the actual distance of the hypotenuse. We already have that. We need to find the angle. So we need inverse tangent for that. So opposite over adjacent. Okay. Or other, in other words, y divided by x. Okay, that's what we need. So we're going to do that here. Okay. So there's already a, a function for this that will calculate the degrees for you. Normally you'd get it in radians and you'd have to convert it and all this other stuff, but we don't actually have to do that here. What we can do is we can call the function a tan two degrees and we can pass in what I mentioned opposite over adjacent y over x. Remember, so we pass in the result, the difference from the y into the y and the difference from the x into the x. And so we get the degrees, that angle for the hypotenuse, and we need that. That way we know where to display these icons, based, their angle based on where they're at. All right. Now, there's one other thing that we need to do here. We also are going to need our icon vector, and we're going to need to get the vector 2D length from it. So if we drag off of icon vector here, and type vector 2D length, right here, then we'll have everything we need from our parameters. So essentially we have a degrees value that we're going to be using and we have the length of that vector. These are the two things we need to display them in the correct spot. So at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this vector 2D length off of the icon vector is essentially the radius of that distance that we found. And then the degrees here can be put into sine and cosine to get the corresponding axes. So when we do sine, we're going to get the distance for our x translation. And when we do cosine, we're going to do the we're going to get the distance for our y translation. Okay. So from here, it's actually pretty simple once we understand what what it is that we're doing. Even though it looks like quite a bit, it's not too bad. So get sine and cosine off your degrees, like I said. And first of all, we're going to have to multiply them both by the radius. So factor 2D length multiplied by sine and factor 2D length. I know there's a lot of reroute nodes, but multiplied by cosine. Okay. So this gets multiplied by both of these at one point or another. They both get multiplied by negative one. We have to invert them. Let me show you what happens if we don't invert them. Okay. I'll skip the invert on both of them. Now, this time you can see that everything is going the appropriate spot and clamping because I'm not skipping that, that uh, section at the end. And they're technically set up correctly on the map. Like the one on the right is farther up than the one on the left. So it's slightly different than the issue before when we didn't and we're doing the correct operation. Just it doesn't actually have a limit and then it goes way far past in that given direction. So we just have to invert these. It's really not more complicated than that. These are just not the correct direction if we don't invert them. And that all comes down to, again, the differences between the minimap and the actual distance or the actual locations in the world. Okay. And so once you've sine negative one and then cosine negative one, we have to do the same operation for both X and Y. And we're going to do a clamp. 
Okay, so the clamp is going to keep these values within a given range. This is important because we need to keep them within the bounds of the minimap. If we ignore these clamps, and I can show you what that looks like one final time. So if we were to ignore the clamps, it would look like this. Everything is actually going the proper direction, okay? Our translation is correct, but it doesn't abide by the rules of the minimap. Everything can exit the minimap still. So these clamps are keeping the, the objects within the minimap boundaries. All right, so we need one for the X, one for the Y. Now, again, we have our result from the sine times negative one, and we have the result of the cosine times negative one. These results are gonna both be brought into a clamp float right here, okay? The clamp float requires a min and a max, the minimum value it can go to and the maximum value it can go to. It will keep this value between those. So if it goes above it, it'll only ever leave the max value. If it goes below it, it'll only ever set it to the minimum value. We need to determine what the minimum and maximum values are. So here's this. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it below. Okay, we're going to just look at this. This is the minimum value. This is the maximum value. Let's figure out why. Here's our minimap reference, and we're getting our size and window variable. Remember, the size and window is the size of this widget on the HUD. It is 350 by 350 in my case. Again, if you have a different shape, such as a rectangle, you could have different sizes. But regardless, it's going to be keeping track of your X and Y sizes within the window. The way we determine the minimum X value for a square is we do half of it, in the negative, half of it in the positive for both the X and the Y. Reason being, at the moment, our icon is centered in the middle of this image. 150, or excuse me, 350 divided by two is 175. 175 is half of this image. Starting from the center, if we, do, if we go 175 units farther to the right, we're gonna be all the way at the edge. If we take away 175 units, so going to the left, then we're going to be at the edge. Now, vertical. If we add 175 units, we're going to be at the bottom. If we take away 175 units, we're going to be at the top. Okay? So this can be done mathematically, though. So as you change the size and window variable or change the size of the minimap on your HUD, or if your window resizes, any of that happens, then this math would become slightly off. So we can do it by math, that way we don't have to hard code and pass in a value that could be wrong. So we get our size and window variable, we multiply it by 0 0.5 or basically cut it in half. Then our maximum value is the positive value there, okay? So this is our maximum right here, multiplied by 0 0.5. But our minimum is the same thing, multiplied by negative one to get the negative value of it, okay? So looking at this in action, I have the one that's multiplied by negative one. That's going to be our minimum. When the result is only multiplied by 0 0.5, that's our maximum. We do this for the X and we do it for the Y. It's the same exact calculation. Then we take the return value of the clamp of the X and bring that into translation X and tr translation Y on this node set render translation. Set rendered translation is something you can actually set for any uh, widget related item. So right now we're a map icon widget. We're just in the center of this canvas. And this is the widget that appears on the screen. So when you call this node set render translation, it's going to move this around the widget that it's on. So if we split the struct pin, we split it into an X and a Y. That's, that's where you plug in the translation X and translation Y. Okay, so if you do all this math and don't translate it, then nothing's gonna happen. They're all gonna appear here. So that set render translation is really what actually moves it. Everything else we were doing was just grabbing the appropriate value to move it to. This is the only node that actually moves it. All right. So now with all of this here, we can finally have a map that works and things will go to the edges. Quick note. Uh, if you're doing a like a circular map or like I said a rectangular map, the math is going to change a little bit. 
So anyway, guys, there you go. That's how we can set up our mini map to store these icons and display them at the correct spots and not allow them to leave the mini map. We still have some more episodes to cover, such as getting rid of these icons once they go off the side of the minimap. So uh, some icons you may want to stay, like if you have a specific quest marker, you know, it can be at the edge of the map like that. And, oh, I want to keep going this way until it's here. But some icons you may not want to stay. You may want to get rid of them if they go off the side. Uh, specifically enemy icons, you probably don't want to keep them on there the whole time. You have like 100 enemies on your map, and they're all like at the corner. It's going to be really ugly. Okay. So we have that we can cover. Uh, we'll cover opening the mini map and using a full map. Putting markers on the map. Custom, you know, with like waypoints and things like that. Pathing on the map. Uh, being able to zoom in and out of the map. There's a lot of things we can do with this that we haven't done yet. So we're not done at all, but you can see how much further we've come now from the basic mini map where we just had a camera to this specialized mini map where we can add whatever icons and textures we want on whatever actor slash object that we have. So yeah, we've come a long way. We've got plenty more to do with this mini map specifically. So I don't have much more to say than that, but I hope this episode helped you. I hope it made sense did please subscribe does more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do just really appreciate it i want to give a huge shout out to my youtube membership and patreon members supporters and subscribers thank you all for being here and for giving me that love and support i'm incredibly grateful for everything you've done i really really enjoy these series and i'm glad you guys enjoy them as well um, I, I always get excited to show these things to you so glad you are sharing my excitement if you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. It's completely free. I'd be happy to assist you and get you caught up so you can continue working on your game. Anyway, guys, like I said, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.